Hello, bonjour. Today, I want to show you how to make this type of painting from scratch using the software Krita. Uh, it's an ambitious project because I want to stop at each step and try to break down what I have in mind when I take some decision. So it might take time, but uh, I hope it will make a very good video. So let's start. The production of this video was sponsored thanks to the supporters of my webcomic. I'll tell a bit more at the end of the video. I would like to start this tutorial with a little introduction of how I customize my Krita interface. And for that, I will launch a little script I made that wipes all my preferences. And so I can usually test Krita without uh, my customizations. And here we go. This is the interface of Krita. I will resize a little bit the windows. If I try to click anywhere, it will not work. And this is because all these elements are locked by default when you launch Krita. You need to create a new file at first, custom document, create, and then you will be able to move things around. So on the first thing I'm doing, I reduce the size of this icon here. They are big by default because Krita is also a program that is on Android and uh, for the touch device and touch screen, it's good to have big icon for the big fingers. But here I have a mouse and a tablet so I can right click and reduce that to 16 by 16. Then I will shrink this to a single column. I also customize the advanced color selector here. So pick the little button here on the corner of the advanced color selector. And I click on the preview and select the square shape of the color selector. I press OK. And why I'm doing this? Because I like to have my value scale uh, like this. So I can see something a bit in the middle and something dark and something bright. I'm not using the little shade selector here, so I will reopen the setting and go to the shade selector and say type not show, do not show. I also usually put my brush preset list, that's all this icon of the brush, as a second column. So for this, I grab the title of the docker and so I can move it and then I bring it on the top column like this and I release the button. And now I will plug the layer just under the advanced color selector. It's a bit wobbly, but you can manage to do that. And I will resize it so I have a little bit more space on my list of brush. The list of brush and the icon size, I can reduce it. So there is a little hamburger menu here. You can click it and reduce the icon size. I also do not use the tab of Krita. And tab is when you create more than one document, like two or three, and you get the new document by tab on the top here. I prefer a mod that is named sub windows, but that is not the default. You can go into setting, configure Krita, and under window, you will find here the option multiple document mode, and by default it's tab, and I switch it to sub windows. So when you are using sub windows, the main windows that you will work will be maximized and you will get the command here under your uh, window manager button. So I will just reduce all of them and you can see that all my documents are like little windows that I can manage how I, how I want on my canvas. So for example, putting one here or one here, but it unlocks also a menu here, windows, and you have access to Cascade, that Cascade all the windows open, and Till, that auto tile the document open this way. 
I usually need more icon on the top toolbar of Krita and to add them I will go to setting configure toolbar and this panel will show you two columns. So one column here will be all the available action and all the available icon you can plug on your toolbar and this will be like a representation in vertical of your horizontal toolbar. But as you can see, you have only new, open, save, undo and redo and that's only this little part here. If you want to access this big part, it's a bit hidden because you can see that toolbar here refer to just this little things here and here. And uh, it's a little bit hidden by default, but you have to click this and brush and stuff will be the other toolbar here. Something that I like is the brush option slider three. Brush option slider three. And if you want this one to be on this list, you have this little arrow here. So press this one and the slider will join the list. And we will move it also down. So one, two, three. I hit apply and then I have a third one that is on the top. I prefer to have the opacity in second and the size in first or something like that. I also need a lot more icon here. So I will continue and I will just plug uh, on the list various icon like the stabilizer off and on here. And then I will put a little undo and save button and because uh, on the first toolbar, there is uh, also this feature that I don't need, I'm just removing them. I also like to customize a little bit what appears on the canvas. I dislike by default the color, it's a too bright gray. So if you go to setting, configure Krita, and if you go to display, grid setting, I have no idea why it, it, it's in grid because this is not a grid, but uh, you have the canvas border color here. And if you click on it, you can pick a deeper gray. And now I will customize the cursor. So here you can see what we call the brush outline. And for that, I go to setting, configure Krita in general. And here I have option for the brush cursor. So there is no cursor actually, and there is only the brush outline. It's the preview outline. Uh, I made a big article about the cursor and the outline on my blog, and uh, you will find probably the link into the description. But um, in, in a nutshell, uh, I advise to take or the small circle uh, so it will be a little small circle cursor always at the center or a triangle that is right and dead or left and dead uh, depending of your uh, way to handle stylus. And last customization is about the tool option docker. So the tool option docker is a very important docker in Krita because if you click on any tool here in your toolbar on the left, uh, you will see that the content is changing depending of the tool. But I really dislike to have this uh, one plugged by default and hidden behind the color selector because I can't really see uh, what happened in it. And when I need to access it, uh, I need to hide the color and go back. So I find it really more convenient to get the tool option as an icon between these two that I can click and get the tool option appearing here. And to set the tool option like that, you need to go to setting, configure Krita, into general, into tools, and here you will have the option. Tool option location, and it says it needs a restart of Krita, and I will say now in toolbar, not in a docker. I press OK, and then I restart Krita. And if I create a new file, and I will pick a A4 at 300 ppi. 
So this part will be filled with this preset and then RGB 8 byte and sRGB for the profile. It's uh, something very default. And I press create. You will see that my tool option now are on the top toolbar here. So if I select another tool, it reflects directly on this button. I will finalize the customization with one thing. It will be to plug here the overview docker. So I will go to setting, docker, and find the overview here. So I click on it. And this is a representation of what is on your canvas. So if I do a shape like this, you will see it in little. And this is very convenient to get a sort of a distant view of your artwork. So by default, Overview received some uh, feature over the years with the zoom, the rotation, many buttons. And I prefer to deactivate that because I can also zoom with control and space on my keyboard without buttons. I can also rotate with shift and space on my keyboard as I want. And I can also pan the canvas around with space and I can navigate. So I don't really need uh, all of this. And so you have here a little pin on the bottom of the overview docker. And if you click here, the little button will disappear, but you can still move your mouse or your tablet over and access this type of menu. So this is very convenient. And once the overview docker is like that, I just take it and I plug it here on the corner and then I maximize Critar. For this tutorial, I will use the default preset set. You know that on my blog and on my uh, channel, I share a lot of brushes, but I thought it would be more interesting for this tutorial to start with the default set of brush. So that's all for the customization. So now what to draw? As I'm recording this, I have no idea. What I want to do uh, is probably to go to the Krita Artist Forum here on kritaartist.org and I will see what is the monthly contest. So uh, I'm scrolling down to contest and monthly art contest. And the monthly art contest, this is always uh, with a little pin in front is draw Kiki, the Krita mascot, in your own style. Ah, that will be funny. Uh, so you can access here the thread. The idea was submitted by Grum 999. And uh, yes, that looks really fun. So I'm closing that. And now I will start to think what it means to uh, draw Kiki in my own style. I think the best thing to do in order to do that is to collect some references. My favorite tool for that is not in Krita itself. It's an external software that runs also on Linux, but uh, also on other platform, I guess. And it's Bref here. You can see the icon and I'm clicking on it and I have the Bref windows appearing on my second screen. So I will bring it here and Bref just collect a lot of uh, image quickly and uh, I will just grab some picture and make a little time lapse about uh, what I'm grabbing, copying and pasting in Bref. So here is the document I collected and this is only uh, open licensed content and you have the mascot official design by Tyson Tan and this photo uh, by uh, 
Aspanasevich Maxim on Wikimedia Commons, and these are public domain uh, photos. Uh, so I selected uh, this picture that I made recently of Pepper, and this is the type of composition that I will try to replicate uh, on this tutorial. I will save this document, and during this tutorial I will move it um, into my second monitor, so uh, you will not see it. If you don't have two monitors, uh, you can just resize BREF like this on a column on the side of your screen. And there is also, I think it's orange vertical that will put everything into a column if you need that uh, next to your Krita. So now let's start to draw. So I will switch my mouse to my stylus in my hand. I will start to zoom a little bit uh, on this canvas. I need to do some thumbnail first because um, if I do some little drawing, I will have a better idea of how I can handle my composition and how I handle the pose, uh, the tilt of the face and uh, everything I want to story tell on this picture. So at first staring at a white background like that on my screen is very difficult. I have to reduce a little bit the, the backlight. So what I did here is just to select a mid gray color and press shift and backspace on my keyboard. But you can find it, edit, fill with foreground color. You can also lock here with the little padlock on the layer. So you will not accidentally uh, draw on this. You see the cursor now is a, a little uh, prohibited symbol. And we create a new layer on the top with a little plus here. And you can name it. And I will select a brush from the default. Um, there is this one that I like, Charcoal Rock Soft from the list. I will select this one. And I will pick not the pure black color, but something like a maybe 10% uh, black. Um, I will reduce the size of uh, the brush because it's a bit too large by default. I hit Ctrl Z to uh, undo. And I press Shift and I hold the key and I drag the brush to be smaller. A bit like the tip of a large felt pen. So I think I want a portrait for the format of the of the document, but not something uh, too stretchy like this, not something that is closer to a square. So I will do one like that and I play Ctrl J on the keyboard and just duplicate it like this three times. And then I press Ctrl E to merge them back to thumbnail. So I have here my three uh, thumbnail. Uh, they are not perfectly aligned. I can rotate this. I press Ctrl plus T on the keyboard and it will select the transform tool here on the toolbar. And then I can rotate them a little bit and press Enter on the keyboard to bake uh, the pixels. And I will press B again to switch back to the brush and be able to draw. If I want to erase something, I will press E on the keyboard or just click on this icon here to switch to the eraser. So the eraser is just the same brush that I selected here, but now it's erased. So that's probably not a lot done so far, but it's probably wise to save the document. I like to finish it by a underscore zero zero one so I can save multiple version. In this situation, I don't have a lot of choice. Uh, when you do a portrait, uh, I, have a, I have to think about the value of the composition at first. And you have the situation where you have a strong silhouette on a bright background, or you have the situation where you have a dark background and a bright silhouette like that. And 
of course, you have also all the situation where you can balance that with a, a one side, a lot of shadow, and then it's the background that is dark, but on the other side, the background is brighter. Um, well, you understand. Uh, there is also um, a situation where all the picture is low contrast, like if the character was in the fog. So maybe there is other, and I forget them on the top of my head right now when I'm recording, but that's to just show you uh, what big picture of value we can think. And um, I think that for this illustration, I want to go with this one, uh, mainly because uh, we have Kiki, and we saw that uh, this cyber squirrel is uh, in white. So if I want to make some effect of light on her hair, like that, uh, it will shine a, a little bit more on a dark setting, like that. So what I imagine for, for Kiki, here, is to get a... Um, maybe a shy character with a eye like this probably the, the head that tilt a little bit downward um, because it's a shy character maybe a, it's a bit cliche but a, a scarf around her i want uh, the squirrel ears even if it's not part of the original design so here, um, it's not the, the type of composition I want because uh, Kiki also has an interesting haircut. So I would pick a, a selection tool. We'll draw around this little uh, thumbnail and press Ctrl T and resize. So I have more room on the top of the character and she has this type of shape that is like a lotus. And I want to make this, but with real hair on her design. And she has also an interesting um, type of uh, hair bang in front. I don't, I, I think it's, uh, it's called this way. Sorry for my vocabulary. So maybe a scarf. Um, and probably the shoulder uh, a bit uh, a bit high. So the head a bit low on the shoulder. A very shy person. Probably uh, I would imagine her as a art student. And probably on the background, by night, some distant neon symbol of the big city, like that. And we can probably have uh, some uh, spotlight above her head. So it will be visible here, also there. And um, probably some black on her on her clothes because I see that black is part of her design a lot, and probably a big source of pink will be on the background and the neon symbol. So, uh, for the color contrast that I'm looking for, um, you can already uh, paint it as a thumbnail. Uh, it's good uh, to to get some idea sometime. I would like something that is a like really a interesting twist on a, on Kiki, a Kiki that you usually don't see this way. It's for the fun. Um, probably I will not use that much of white because um, a good contrast with this blue here, you see that I have a uh, some bright yellow right in front or almost right in front 
and I know that white reflects uh, color red light a lot. So maybe, maybe, maybe it can be good to have a um, slightly greenish because going more green, it's going more deep blue. A slightly greenish light. And I'm sure I want a deeper effect on the background. So what I do is I, I select a blending mode for my brush. Uh, so the color will just now um, start to merge differently with the color on the canvas. Um, I can take multiply this one darken, only darken, but um, probably I want something that increase a little bit the contrast. And uh, this one is overlay here. Uh, so if you don't have it in your favorite list on the top, I think it's part of the default, but uh, maybe I, I customized also this list and it can be on the mix, I think. Let's see. Yes, mix it's overlay. So checkbox here. I will not explain that for all the blending mode uh, on this tutorial. So overlay and I will take a, br uh, a dark blue maybe on overlay. And I will boost like this. I will deepen the value around the character. And because overlay um, is one of these blending modes that darken under the mid gray and brighten over the mid gray, I will also get this type of burnt uh, contrast if I do that also on the top a little bit. So I'm launching now a time lapse because. Uh, I want to go through a couple of revision and uh, I will probably switch brushes for something a little bit more sharp on the way, but except that it's still the same process. I want to increase the, the balance of uh, this one. I will press Ctrl R, uh, put a, a big selection around this, press T on the keyboard just to move tool and move everything. I will deselect. Um, you can find it in uh, select, deselect here. Uh, I mapped this one to Ctrl D on my keyboard because I think uh, it's easier than pressing 3K at once. Uh, the default of Krita is, is uh, Control Shift A, um, and for me it's it's difficult to to do that with one hand. Um, and I press Control T just to move them. So now I have more room on the on the side to continue uh, this little quest. And I will duplicate this one because now I want to just increase the the color effect but for that i will use um, uh, layers uh, not layers but uh, um, i will use uh, filters uh, the filters are here on krita and you have adjustment filters and this is a lot of tools that can uh, influence your colors uh, you have for example uh, on the classic the desaturate one that turn everything black and white. Um, you will find uh, also the very uh, classic one, uh, U saturation, HHV adjustment, U saturation value, and uh, you can uh, desaturate, so turning more to black and white, or very saturate and uh, make all the color uh, very popping and uh, uh, it's not very well to, to, to do that, but uh, 
The one that I will use now is filter, adjust and color balance. This color balance filter has a three big category, the highlight, the midtone and the shadow. And um, on our picture, uh, it's easy that uh, if I want my shadow, so the darker part to be a little bit more cyan, uh, I just have to take the slider and, and, and go a little bit more cyan. And, and this is interesting because um, uh, you can see, I will check and uncheck the preview. Uh, it's brighten all the, the picture, but it changed also all the color into uh, one direction that is uh, very interesting to me. So I will uncheck the preserve luminosity. Um, yeah, I already bug reported about this, but this is complex about luminosity and color. If you uncheck this, it will visually preserve more the luminosity, as you can see. So it doesn't really make sense, but I prefer to uncheck it by default. And I will push it a little bit more in the cyan, like this, cyan. Uh, you can see before, after. It's a slight uh, saturation, but I think it, it works better. And on the highlight, so on the hair, maybe I also want uh, to put this cyan and see what it does. And I think it's interesting. So I, I lost a lot of uh, shiny, uh, but it's like if now the highlight of the character is more inside the scene. It's not like if there is a special color red color of studio that uh, divide this character from the environment. So I like that. And I will select now this color and you see that uh, we are now clearly into the green territory, but uh, the, pitch, the the local color almost read still as a yellow one. I, I really like when this is happening. It means that uh, the, the ambient of the piece is starting to, to work together. So I will just push it a little bit. So this is a, a bright light, but because I still have the multiply uh, blending mode on my brush uh, it's going darker and darker and that's not what I want so you can press here the little reload original preset that will that will clean the preset as when it was default before we put this multiply blending mode on it and it will come back to normal you can also press and come back to normal but I usually do that so I have my color selected and now I have this like cold highlight and that's what I wanted when I, I, I took the reference photo of the kitten and of the of everything. I wanted sort this uh, bright color, hair color. Uh, are you? Maybe I'm too influenced by Chichimi on my reference board. Because now, yes, I read and I said the yellow read uh, green, but I actually want her to be uh, white, white hair. So I will probably do some modification. I will probably switch to um, the HSY color blending mode. I think it's part of the default also, so color. And now if I color something, it will just affect the color. And I will probably try slowly because this uh, brush preset I can press uh, lightly on the on the stylus and get very thin glazing so here I glaze to just make all the hair colder so they don't appear anymore yellow It's Kiki. I want her hair to be uh, white. And um, I think uh, uh, it's revealing more and more what I'm really after. Um, not luminosity, but I will take uh, maybe screen, a blending mode that uh, 
Brighton only. Um, I think I want some dramatic light, some sort of Blade Runner setting for Kiki the Cyber Squirrel, and um, I want this uh, contrast of white hair that is uh, a sort of a cliche in anime. So now I have my thumbnail done. I know where I want to go in terms of colors, of contrast, of value, and of uh, character poses. And uh, uh, there is no detail, accessories and everything, but this uh, will come on the next part. Our next step is to uh, clean up a little bit uh, all the volumes and uh, all the, the poses and everything, because even if it works like that as a thumbnail scale, uh, I can guarantee that once I will start to detail it, I will start to find a lot of uh, problem in terms of proportion, in terms of uh, uh, hand anatomy and everything. And uh, if I just keep painting like that on the top, uh, I might take more time. I, I will be totally able to do that, but um, I will just take more time than if I just do a drawing, uh, a better drawing of it. So you will see. I will save this. It will be my first version. And I will press File, Save Incremental Version. And when I press Incremental Version, you will see that the file quickly changed to 002 now. So Incremental, if it's find a number in your file, it will just try the number after. So if it's 001, it will go 002. So now you understand why I named my file this way, because it's very convenient uh, for me. So I will press Ctrl R, do a big selection around the thumbnail that I don't want anymore. Keep this thumbnail, and because I have a A4 300 ppi, and this is a, a good resolution, I will do a little selection around this, and I will stretch now this to my canvas. So uh, you will see I have I will have to crop a little bit the the hard work. I'm cropping with the crop tool a little bit. So now you can see that I'm at thirty three percent of the viewport here on the bottom of the screen, and that means that the real pixel appears if I zoom like three times. These are real pixel, but because my screen is pretty uh, dense into pixel, uh, you see that I have to zoom a lot in Krita to see the actual pixel. So that's why we resized the, the thumbnail to 2,400 2, something by 3,000 something. Uh, it's to get this type of uh, pixel density. I will create a new layer above the thumbnail here. And on this layer, I will redraw a little bit uh, the part that I, I need. So I will put the thumbnail layer into low opacity. So I can see better what I will do with drawing. And on the drawing layer, I will pick a uh, like uh, this one, basic size detail. And I will start to redraw uh, the face of Kiki. And you will see that I, I left on the recording a lot of uh, indication about what I'm doing. You will see a lot of guideline, you will see a lot of visual explanation, and even if I accelerate, uh, I hope it will be still visible and it will give you some hint about what I'm doing.
Before continuing, I will just uh, do another incremental saving, save incremental version. And so now we are on the third step where we um, a sort of blend together our drawing and our colors from the thumbnail. Um, for that, I will just restore the 100% uh, color of the thumbnail. As you can see, it's a mess on the screen. And it, it's not really easy, for example, uh, when you have dark object to know what's going on, for example, for the backpack here, because I have some very dark value and now I totally lost my edges. Uh, same for this, uh, because it was describing a shoulder, but now the shoulder isn't existing anymore because I have my scarf here. Uh, so everything like that makes it very difficult to read. Uh, for, of course, for the burn, for the eyes and everything. It's easier to manipulate the thumbnail uh, when it's a little bit brighter. Uh, here I will do another technique. It's uh, filling a layer with white. So uh, at the start of the tutorial, I show you that uh, you can fill with foreground with shift and backspace. And that's what I did for this layer. It's a temporary layer, so I will just rename it with a, a little uh, dots on it. And I will just remove the opacity a little bit, so now everything is brighter. Uh, it's, a, it's like a, a sort of a overlay, so I can just turn it on and off and see what I do on the Sunday clean. I will select a brush that deforms. It's a distort move and it's in the default brush. So this brush distorts everything like this, and you can move uh, everything. It's like liquify, but in real time. Uh, and the trade-off of being real time is it makes everything goes very blurry. So if you have a tiny detail like that and you use it, uh, they will be lost. But, our thumbnail doesn't have precious detail and I just want to move the mass of color here and there. So now everything uh, moved not really in place. You can see uh, we have an uh, ear of Kiki that is not painted at all. Uh, we made the dark a pointy tip. Uh, there is a lot of things that can be improved, but it's at least a little better than this uh, in terms of uh, readability. And when I will put this one to zero, it will work a little bit better. But now the picture is very dark because our drawing uh, input a lot of darkness. You see. Uh, it's like increasing a lot the darkness compared to, to our thumbnail. And that's because our lines are dark and I'm aiming for a rendering without line. Um, so these lines are just sky line. And I will turn them into a blending mode that is the grain merge. So uh, you will find it under mix, maybe, yeah, grain merge if it's not part of your favorite. And I will put this one. And grain merge, um, as you immediately see, the dark line over a bright area uh, start to become uh, brighter. Uh, this, uh, only this already uh, improve a little bit the situation. And I will reduce the opacity quite a lot. Probably like that. 50%. Uh, I like rounded number. Uh, so we still have our original uh, thumbnail, uh, the deformation, and now our drawing. And I will continue to take a rounded brush. So I will make thumbnail just to compare our step. Thumbnail clean. Uh, thumbnail painting, but maybe. And this is a sort of coating of painting uh, under the, the lines. So 
I will pick a, a brush for this. Maybe this one, the basic size opacity. Testing. Yeah, good. Uh, right now I'm, I'm just used to one that has a little bit more uh, hardness on pressure. So I will probably customize it a little bit this way. Yeah, that looks good. And the brush tip, maybe to, to be a little bit more interesting. I will just squeeze a little bit the ratio and give it a little angle like that. Yeah, so I will save this brush. Uh, before that, I, I'm picking a, a black color because I, I want to paint on the on the thumbnail of the brush. So I will put save new brush preset um, just to see that this is my brush. I will just draw something over it. Uh, you have here the load from Icon Library, where you can uh, choose uh, what tip you want uh, for your brush. So, if you want to make your custom brush, uh, there is uh, like tools. You can change the color, yellow. Let's take a yellow, and uh, I will draw here the stroke. and show that this is a tilted shape and i will call it basic five opacity so this is a a brush that glaze a little bit at low opacity so on my tablet if i pick a color like this and i just press slightly you'll see i obtain some glazing you can see the transparency but if I press a little bit harder, I replace the color. So I will try to adapt the, the color palette with this type of brush. And of course, this brush has a hard edge. It means that you see the border, it's very thick here on the side. Um, sometimes the brush of Krita are optimized for very, very, very low. Uh, performances uh, so the brush run fast but you can see that there is here a problem with the spacing I have the shape that repeats uh, not enough so uh, you have this uh, visible on, on big stroke uh, that's a little problem for our tutorial and uh, I will just reduce the, the, the spacing so I, I open again the brush editor and the spacing is to 20 percent yes no wonder why i will just uh, lower it to yeah maybe five percent maybe a little more six percent oh let's go and size uh, the curve could be a little bit more harder it's just because my stylus start to get uh, tired on this old tablet and uh, I need a curve like that more and more to experience slow, uh, low pressure. Okay, um, I will not save the fact that it's an uh, eraser. I'm testing. Yeah, this brush looks good. Let's uh, overwrite this brush preset. So now I have a brush and I can do some spiky shape. I usually all just draw quickly like this and just remove. So I color, se I color select with a control and just remove another part. You see, I can do very sharp spike. So a, a sort of rounded brush like that uh, for me is uh, 
is what I use actually. At that point, I start to be uh, uh, blocked by a lot of line from my line art. Uh, it, it's when I start to paint and uh, you see the line by transparency stop to prevent me to do some fix. Uh, for example, at these uh, other eyes, I start to see that here I would like to probably fix the volume uh, from another view angle. But uh, you see, I have this edge here that prevent me to do that and um, that's a problem with uh, line art and with uh, drawing uh, and that's why i dislike to just paint under because while painting i often spot a lot of mistakes and that's why at this point what i will do is just to select all the artwork like this and go to edit Copy Merged and Control V Projection. But here now you can see that uh, this is like a solid picture and I probably don't need all this layer under now. So I, I will do some little cleaning like this, this, this and the thumbnail. Um, I will probably merge like this, like this, like this. And I usually name that under. It's like the under paint. I keep the drawing along because it's fun to, to get the, the first idea. And uh, this way I can still uh, blink and see if uh, something is weird. So for example, here you see that I pushed the iris and this line that uh, uh, bugs me is actually uh, the iris itself. And yes, I felt that uh, I had to, to fix that. So I will do it now. And um, I will probably launch a time lapse for all of that. So you will see me hiding the layer and trying to, to recover some part of the drawing that I couldn't uh, do that before. Paint over of our piece is taking shape. The, there is no problem about it. So uh, I can show you the uh, paint over layer right now and compare it with uh, what we had before. So I made a lot of painting on the shape of the face and tried to fix it. Uh, eh, I'm not super satisfied with that. Uh, I will continue on tweaking this, but I wanted to stop the time-lapse 
for now. Uh, just to show you something that I start to be a little bit uh, annoyed with something and it's with uh, the value and I have a very big uh, range of value here and this is interesting uh, maybe I can show a docker the histogram histogram so where are you hiding here so I will unfold it and put here so i'm pretty happy with um, how we have some uh, dark part of our picture here so this is all the pixel that are dark so th there is a blue one the green one and the red one and uh, we have a very good um, dark palette uh, and uh, a few pixel that are on the bright and there is this type of curve that is really typical to the to the value setting i explained uh, in in the start when we started the thumbnail so uh, a very dark environment and some uh, point of light that's why in this painting for example uh, this totally uh, normal red you see it's it's even not if i if i show it on the the color palette it's even not the most saturated or the most bright one i still have a lot of room but uh, already a red like that really shine a lot in a dark environment like that but i think i can push it a little bit more um, i think the this part here can move a little bit this way. So I have sort of to darken the gamma of uh, the piece. I, I think it it's a little bit too bright. And also I think that my highlight here, um, you can see that they are still not white, but they are almost full white. And I don't like that because um, I saw that on my recent uh, painting experience, that going to pure white uh, should be really reserved to, to some light source that faces the camera. Because we work on a flat layer, it's just on the top of our layer stack, but it's easy to just duplicate it. And I will name it Adjust. And I will also duplicate it so I can see my adjustment before and after. Uh, Control M. And this is the color adjustment of Krita, the curves. And you can find also them in filter, adjust, and uh, let's see color adjustment curve here, control M. And so I made a video about um, curves and about adjustment where you can see more gaming filters and everything. But for this piece, I, I just want to uh, take the white part of the pixel here and just lower it a little bit. So doing it this way, just it's like adding a layer of darkness on the top. It's not what I really want. I want just to probably here, you see, lowering this part. But if I lower this part, uh, because the curve of Krita is like that. Uh, you lower also all the dark and everything. So it's, it's really difficult with this tool to just selectively the highlight darken them. But if you create a lot of node on your, uh, on your curve, it's possible. So this way, preview. And you can see that here, the highlight that were totally burnt, I can lower them uh, and make a selection about that. So that's what I will continue to do. Probably lowering and lowering them. Ah, nice. So now I feel that I have more room to just draw more highlight on this artwork. Uh, and that was uh, sort of important for me. I also lost something that I wanted at the thumbnail. Now I have this light that is very cold 
uh, it's because I wanted to make a, a, sh a skin shading that was very uh, white, but now it looks like a, a, a bit pink. And I wanted to save this pink for another part. So I will apply this like this, like that. And because the effect is slightly too strong, I can reduce the opacity. Like that, yes, maybe. And just merge down. Okay. Now I want to um, probably recover some uh, greenish uh, highlight. So I can do this with the curve, but uh, I can also do this more simply with the color balance. I will go on the highlight and uh, getting into the yellow territory, maybe. Yeah, and checking preserve luminosity, maybe. And I have something that is closer to what I want. Now, the hair still looks uh, a little bit white. Maybe I, I just push a little too much. But now they are a material. They are not a source of light. And that's what I, what I wanted. And uh, there is also all this bed here of a <laughs> bed because <laughs> Uh, this is an expression, but it's an uh, environment here that I want to push into this direction a little bit. So I would like, I will call again the curve and I will lower just a little bit the, the, the black part. So now before to move to more uh, adjustment on the background, I need to add some more detail on the background. So I will launch a time lapse where I paint a little bit more this background. I totally dislike how the value of the background start to compete with the character. So I have some darkness and some light part here on the character and they are really too similar with the background. So I will create a new layer and I will put the mode into lighten. Uh, the blending mode lighten, you will find it if it's not part of the default in the lighten category here. And I will pick a big airbrush, like this one. And on this lighten layer, I will just take a bright color, like that. And I will just paint a very subtle haze, like a fog, on, on this. Maybe I can add a little bit texture to that. So uh, on the default set of Krita, you have this little checker box red uh, near to the brush that produces a lot of texture. So maybe this one, texture wood fiber. Uh, it's not really texture for wood. This is just an example, uh, but it makes some, uh, you see, so, some big line. And uh, I don't want to suggest some rain, but I want to make some more interesting stuff in the background. Just that. As I said, it will be blurry after, and that might uh, do the trick. I will also put some random, just little stain here uh, with the brush texture splat, yeah, splatter. So it can be dust in the environment. It can be many things. And then I will pick a brush uh, eraser brush, the eraser circle, and I will just erase the character from this uh, blue haze and texture. Uh, the thumbnail now is, uh, 
way easier to read. And I like this effect. So, and probably uh, a part that doesn't work really well for the silhouetting is uh, the, the burn of uh, the, the top left one, this one. So I just come with a small brush that this one, the Bristol for glaze, and uh, I'm glazing just gentle stroke here and there. Yeah, like that, maybe. It's easier to read. And there is this bun now that I think that still uh, don't have enough contrast. So I will come back to the overlay. We saw it on the thumbnail. And I will just paint a dark gray stroke here under. So it will improve a little bit the, the contrast on it. Uh, here I have a stroke that overlay this color and it make a, a saturation burst into the green. It's not really what I want, so I, I'm erasing this part. As you can see, I'm not zooming in a lot in my artwork. I try to, to keep the, the general idea. I also don't like how the, the her ears, uh, her squirrel ears, are not really, really blending into the piece. Uh, yeah, th there is something that uh, that bugs me, uh, mainly because they look really animal right now. I think the piece could work so much better without them. Uh, and Kiki would probably look a little bit more human, but probably that's something I want to achieve here. And now I want to um, blur this background also. That's something I don't do just right at the end. I prefer to do it uh, uh, before doing a pass of uh, small brush polishing. So uh, what I do here is I will uh, create a filter mask on this layer. But for that, it's easier to just launch the filter I want to do. So I'm going to filter, blur, and I will go to lens blur. So I will keep probably the, the same type of uh, blur, pentagon. And I will put just a larger radius until it looks uh, like something distant in the background. Like this I like because I still can guess that this is a billboard, like um, this is a little city in the background. And there is still uh, some uh, data reading. Maybe I overdid it. Yes, maybe like that. And I will create a filter mask. So right now, it's, the, the filter mask is white. And it means uh, it's on in all the picture. White is on and black is off. Uh, so what I will do is I will just pick a brush. And um, I will start with maybe a very strong edged brush, maybe the, the, the one I, I made, uh, it, it's a good one. And I will come with black and I will just reveal the sharp detail of my painting, like that. Oh, so I'm doing the character. and the brush in her hair and suddenly it gives a lot of depth to, to the artwork because the eyes is uh, able to probably see the difference between background and foreground more easily. So that's something uh, blur and camera effect that I 
uh, slowly insert more and more in my artwork. And someone asking me to uh, do this tutorial about my newest art style. <laughs> so this is one that includes uh, a lot of uh, things like that. Like that. Uh, something I like to do is to take an airbrush now, take some white, and you see the edge of the character. Uh, maybe the camera can focus on the, the nose, on the eyes, but all of this part that turn in the distance, just blurring them a little bit. Uh, Sometimes it helps at doing a little something. Now I would like to push uh, the little details of the painting. You, you can see that the brush here, uh, they, they could be pushed a little bit more. Uh, the neck here is uh, not readable at all. Uh, the eyes could have better and thinner edge. Uh, and um, I will start a, a time lapse because I, I probably will spend now uh, the longest time uh, in this piece. So probably uh, one big hour of uh, detailing. Yes, detailing has a high price on the, <laughs> on the artwork. And I could probably let it like that for the contest because it could be like a speed painting and uh, the picture is already uh, uh, telling a lot but uh, let's try to push this one to something a little bit more finished. So I know I'm reaching the last part of the artwork because now each painting stroke I put on it, uh, I think I have to deal uh, with a lot of uh, uh, testing before, after, and I think I start to destroy the piece. Uh, 
So that's a good sign for me that the artwork is done. Um, I will try to archive now the file. And uh, in order to do so, I will probably uh, just merge all the layer in my paint over layer. So I, I will select it and go to convert to paint layer. So now my group is uh, a single layer and I remove the merged. Uh, I rename the, the layer and now I can compare to uh, all the big step of the drawing. So the paint over the drawing and the under painting. Uh, because I have a lot of pixel outside the canvas, uh, what I will do is I will go to uh, Trim to Image Size and this will remove the pixel outside the canvas. So the fill size will be smaller this way. And now my file is ready to archive and I will probably go to um, Save Incremental for a last saving. And um, yep, I will... Uh, Call that a final. So I'm recording this final uh, segment one day after the shooting and the realization of this uh, artwork uh, because I usually put a night on all my artwork and when I wake up the day after I have like a fresher eyes on some small but some fundamental problem usually on the artwork and that's the case for this one. So I would just duplicate my paint over a layer and I will do the modification in this one and I will press Ctrl G to put that in a group so now uh, I will have a, a group if I, I do more layer I can turn off and on the group So that was a lot of work. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank here all the supporters of my webcomic. Uh, they are on LiberaPay, Patreon, and also TP. Uh, if you can join them, thank you very much. I only receive donation, except for LiberaPay, but on TP and Patreon, the main platform, I receive donation only when I publish a new episode of Pepper and Carrot. And that is happening very rarely now. So like two times or three times per year, just because I'm focusing a lot on the quality and I'm opening all the process. So I'm opening the uh, storyboard to the community and we do a lot of proofreading, a lot of review. Uh, and uh, I also write it in French. So we do the translation after in English before posting and all this organization take a lot of time but also all the polishing that i put in the panel takes a lot of time and um, by having a lot of supporters i can invest my time into this type of quality and also still get some days to explain on the blog my process and also make this type of video and uh, making a video like this takes time uh, like one day for shooting uh, maybe one day for the ideas and for taking notes and uh, doing the video editing and posting, etc, etc, etc. So thank you very much if you can help me to continue to do this type of work. 
Um, for everything else, subscribe button, like, uh, uh, comments, you know what to do to uh, please the algorithm if you can. Thank you very much and see you later. Bye bye.